Hi, I'm Andy, uh, and this is uh, a video in which I uh, tell you how, what I found out about Dart when I wrote a small snake game in it. I'm doing a whole series of um, uh, trying out different programming languages by writing a snake game in them. Uh, just to prove to you that I really did, here it is. Uh, this is a snake written in Dart, running in a web browser, because that's where uh, Dart programs run. Uh, works in Firefox and Chrome, probably, presumably works in other web browsers as well. So you can see that it works. Uh, let me show you the code. We'll go into detail about more of this stuff, but um, as you can see, it starts with the main method. You can make objects that uh, uh, look a bit like Java. Um, you can have constants. You have a switch statement, uh, classes. Uh, all looks a lot like Java with a little bit of stuff that looks a bit like JavaScript thrown in. Um, and just for completeness, I'll show you the um, the Dart programming environment, uh, which is what I used to actually write this code. This is an Eclipse-based environment, so this is where I wrote the code, and when I click the Run button, uh, that uh, launches the web browser. Uh, so that's it working. Let's have a look at what we're going to talk about. Um, so first of all, why why write Snake in all these different languages? Uh, and then why use Dart? What is Dart? Uh, and then the main story about Dart is that there are no surprises, uh, especially if you're a Java programmer, uh, nothing about Dart will surprise you. It seems to you, it, it will seem to you, I imagine, as a Java programmer, like how JavaScript should have been done in the first place. In particular, uh, it has lexical scope, it has some little helpful tricks around how to construct objects and uh, use properties. It comes with a full development environment, IDE. Um, I'll talk a bit about how to deploy it, and that'll be that. Okay, so first of all, why Snake? Well, um, I always write Snake in whatever language I'm trying to learn, because I like Snake, um, because it's a simple game, um, but it involves uh, arrays and some basic constructs like loops and constants. Uh, it has a UI which um, a lot of languages are quite difficult to get up and running with a UI uh, and it takes in input so it kind of just covers uh, stuff you're going to need to think about when you write a real program but it's quite simple. Okay so what is Dart? Well it seems to me that what they're trying to do with Dart is basically redo JavaScript, take out all the stuff about JavaScript that's confusing, uh, that's different from what you might call mainstream, other mainstream programming languages. Uh, uh, and basically make it look more like Java. So what is it, how does it work? Well, it's a language that, uh, that you edit in a .dart file and then, uh, you, when you can, when you compile it using the Dart SDK, it compiles it to JavaScript and HTML and stuff. Um, uh, and then you can just copy that onto your web server. So no one needs to know that you use Dart, uh, or no one needs to have Dart themselves in order for your stuff to work. It'll work in everyone's browser. Uh, you, you just write your app with a little bit of HTML and CSS, and then you write your code in Dart. So basically Dart just drops in instead of JavaScript. It will feel very familiar to you if you're a Java programmer, or and if you've used other mainstream languages, um, I'm sure it will feel reasonably familiar as well. Um, it has type checking, uh, like Java, where you say what type of uh, each variable is, um, but you don't have to use it. You can uh, you can be much more vague about it if you want to. It will also infer your types, uh, and also it is a programming environment, not just a language. Um, they provide uh, an editor, uh, which gives you the kind of stuff you may be used to um, from your Java IDE. So, first of all, and the key point about Dart from what I've found so far, uh, bear in mind that this is, my, these are my first impressions of Dart, not having used it before this. Uh, the, anyway, the key thing is uh, that there are really no surprises, especially if you're familiar with Java. So this is how you would write a main method. It's not exactly the same as Java, but it, uh, it's not exactly alien, is it? You know, it, uh, lines end with semicolons. Um, you've got round brackets, curly brackets, so bits of code and so on strings in quotes. Um, 
and this is how you write uh, a function that returns a value uh, that's identical to how you might write something in Java. Uh, this is how you define a class. Uh, you can define member variables. Again, uh, it looks very familiar to a Java C++ programmer and not too unfamiliar to someone from uh, other languages like Python. You have a constructor that takes in arguments. Uh, in a moment, we'll see a better way of doing uh, what I've done here, which is a nice little a bit of syntactic sugar and dart. Uh, for loops, again, no surprises, n uh, nothing here um, to trip you up. Um, again, if uh, equals equals means uh, means equality of things. Uh, you can set member variables by just giving their name. You have a switch statement um, with case and break, just like in the old-fashioned languages. So really, um, they haven't done anything to improve on traditional programming languages. So we haven't seen it so far. There's a couple of little things. What they're going for is not to make a new, better language, but to just make, basically, it seems to me, just to avoid using JavaScript and use a language that's more normal, more like the other normal languages when you're writing web code. Uh, you even have um, stuff that looks like Java generics and works in a fairly similar way, like this. It's a list of points. Um, so, uh, key advantages over JavaScript, you have lexical scoping, uh, by which I mean basically um, variables work the way they should work. So if you define x inside these curly brackets here, um, it, then that value for x is preserved inside those curly brackets, and when you get out of them again, uh, the old value of x comes back, which, if you're used to JavaScript, um, doesn't always work. So, uh, scope is in a function, not inside every set of curly brackets you've got. Uh, some little tricks that you've got in Dart that could make your life a little bit nicer. Uh, first of all, if you look at the top three th three lines of this class, you've got um, two member variables defined there, width and left, and then there's a little bit of syntactic sugar in your constructor. If you say game brackets this dot width comma this dot left, then um, your your fields or your member variables width and left get uh, automatically assigned from wherever gets passed into that constructor. So instead of having to say this dot width equals width, this dot left equals left, as you might do in Java, that it just does that for you. Also you get um, properties. So you can basically treat this value right uh, like a variable, you can say uh, my game dot write equals three, or print my game dot write, and uh, with no brackets or anything, and it will go and uh, run this code, this this properties code. So when you use the value of write, it will actually run a method, run this method here, and return left plus width. And when you set the value of write, it will run this code here, and it will set width to uh, the value you provided minus left. So that, um, if you're not familiar with properties, it basically means you can run code where it looks like you're just using um, a field or a member variable. Uh, it's familiar from quite a lot of other languages, um, C Sharp, Python, Ruby. Uh, maybe one day Java will get it. Um, all the others, anyway. Uh, okay, so Dart. Uh, it's not just an SDK. You can just download the SDK and use your favorite editor. And to be fair to Dart, I didn't do that, and that would probably be more suited to the way I would normally work. I wanted to give Dart a proper uh, test of uh, what they're trying to do, and they, they sort of encourage you to to get their their editor and get the full experience. Um, that probably wouldn't be my preference, and I uh, I definitely found it wasn't my preference when I tried it. Uh, the development environment is based on Eclipse, um, which I find to be very heavy and uh, often uh, uh, more work than it saves. Um, the just running, launching the development environment on my machine used up two gigabytes of my RAM straight away. Uh, it does provide you with code completion. You press the dot, and you can see uh, completions that you want. It automatically compiles your code while you're running it and shows you errors in it and gives you syntax highlighting. So um, uh, if you think those things are worth the 
uh, the slowness and memory usage and sometimes pain of using Eclipse and um, that's available to you. Um, uh, and then uh, you can you can make a finished sort of deployable version of your thing in three clicks, or you can just you can run it and see if it works in one click. Um, so that's pretty useful. Um, and it does seem to work. You press you, you press the deploy button. It makes a directory containing all the images, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that you need, and copies it somewhere. And then you can just open the HTML file in your browser, and it works. Um, but that does kind of um, brings to light one of the worries about this, which is to run my incredibly simple Dart program, my Eclipse uh, environment pulled in a whole load of uh, dependencies that I didn't know what they were for. Um, and my actual deployed thing, therefore, contains quite a lot of code that I didn't write, uh, which I find a bit worrying. So if I just switch back to Eclipse and show you what happened when I clicked the Run button, was all of this stuff happened. It downloaded a whole load of dependencies. I don't know what these are. Um, it did a load of stuff. Made some JavaScript out of my Dart, which I would expect. Um, made some icons, did some CSS. So uh, an awful lot of stuff happened behind my back. Now, if you, if you think that's good, then your instincts are going to fit with Dart, I think. You know, if that, if, if you feel like that's, that that stuff must be making your life better, then you're going to like Dart. If you feel like I tend to, that I'm worried by that, and I, I'm worried that it's going to affect performance, or it's going to be doing things I wasn't expecting, or it just feels feels wrong to me, um, then you might have a problem with it. Now it's slightly unfair because all languages have a standard library, and in some sense, what Dart's doing here is just providing me with standard uh, library components. Uh, mainly, the main worry to me is not that that stuff's available, but that so much of it was needed for such a small project. I mean, maybe that's just a constraint of being um, trying to be a standard thing in a in an HTML world. And that's it. Those are my impressions of Dart. Um, do let me know in the comments. I'm very, very new to it. Um, uh, I'm sure I got a lot of things wrong, or my impressions are wrong. And as I say, I didn't try out the standalone SDK, which maybe feels very light and, and pure uh, in that environment. But if you're looking to basically write code that looks like Java and have it run in your browser and avoid having to write JavaScript, I reckon Dart was made for you. So uh, enjoy it. Um, uh, if you would like to donate a small amount of money every time I make a video, please go to the Patreon page listed there. Uh, and you can commit to uh, just giving sort of one dollar or two dollars for every video and then you can put a limit on it per month so it doesn't go over what you want not that i will make that many videos uh, if you want to see more of my videos check out my youtube page follow me on twitter for information about videos and blog posts and occasionally other bits and bobs follow my blog to find out um, more information about stuff in my videos um, uh, uh, things that I'm working through, th thoughts that I'm having, uh, my open source projects. Um, if you're interested in uh, the full list of open uh, my open source projects, they're on artificialworlds.net. That includes my um, various attempts at writing my own programming language, which is better than all these ones that I'm slagging off. Um, uh, it includes a version of, uh, sort of not very complete version of Lisp uh, that I've written, Scheme. Uh, it includes uh, the TV guide called Free Guide, which is uh, used to be fairly popular and still somewhat popular. Um, uh, it includes something that uh, attempts to let you write stuff that looks a bit like SQL in C++. Uh, it, it includes quite a random collection of other stuff, a few games. Um, do have a look there if you like, and uh, see you next time.